Hello, George here, Victor George Leather Goods, and today we have a fun little Western project for you. Uh, these are uh, saddle fender, Western saddle fender key fobs. These are so much fun for the Western lifestyle folks, the horse people, and uh, anybody that rides Western would love one of these. I'm gonna show you how to make this uh, really simply with your scrap leather stock. So let's talk about this, uh, this novelty Western project that we're about to embark on. Several days ago, I posted on my Instagram page um, these saddle fenders from a Western saddle into a key fob. Um, makes a nice little novelty for the horse folks and people associated in the Western lifestyle. Somebody mentioned they'd like to see how I made them, so I thought I would share that. And uh, they're a lot of fun. These are pretty much the modern saddle fender uh, with stirrups and this is more of the old style of the uh, fenders so i've had mine for many years now and they're just a lot of fun so the first thing that you're going to need obviously is some scrap leather so this is uh, a mixed bag of veg tan leather three four five six seven um, ounce leather that is too good for me to throw away um, it's always something I can find a use for. I like to make rings. Scrap leather is cash. Don't throw it away. Um, anyway, get yourself some leather. If you're in my area and you need some, I will give you some scrap. The next thing you'll need is a little bit of hardware. Uh, probably the most important thing to this project are these one half inch key posts is what they're called. They're almost like a little Chicago screw. Um, I'll give you a better shot here in a second. They're almost like a little Chicago screw, um, but they have nice little floral stamped ends and they're called key posts. One half inch, you can pick these up at zackwhite.com. It's a leather manufacturer and they'll come in a pack of 10 or 100, however you like to buy them. Some typical um, uh, fob eyelets some small double cap rivets and of course your split ring um, split rings for your keys okay so let's go ahead and show you how i do the pattern process and uh, the rest of this is fairly simple so in, in order to draw the actual um, saddle fender um, pretty easy i am not a good artist so what i do is i take some books and then I find some uh, fenders um, that I can copy. The overall length of this is four inches and the widest part in this particular style of fender, it's about an inch and a quarter. Um, so it's basically the perfect size to um, be a fob. Anyway, just go through some books, libraries, um, you, you know, online searches for fenders. Um, Al Stolman book here has a nice fender you could copy and uh, shrink them, enlarge them. These saddlery catalogs have a good source for some fenders. Um, just get creative and draw yourself a nice pattern for the uh, fender itself. Now the stirrup leather is um, a little bit different here. So I'm gonna show you how I draw that here really quickly. So what I do is I take some cardstock and here I've drawn one already. It's two and a half inches in length um, the half inch by half inch pad is centered on that and then it tapers down to a quarter of an inch. So let me just show you real quick how I draw that. And um, that two and a half inch by half inch size stirrup uh, leather um, works. Oop, there it is. Works really good for this uh, particular project. So I'll do it real quick. Please take your time and uh, make sure your lines are true. So I'm gonna go a half inch. I'm gonna do two lines, one half inch apart. And then I'm going to give myself a two and a half inch area. As the actual stirrup leather itself, I'll come up here at the two and a half inch. Okay, you can disregard these areas over here. All right, so now um, to find the center pad, 
because it's two and a half inches, you just go from the end one inch. One inch in, draw a 90 degree line across that. Do the same thing on this other side. And that's your center pad. Now from the edge of these, I'm just gonna go 1 8 inch. Put myself a little tick there. There as well, I have to turn this around. And I'm gonna go 1 8 inch. As you can see here, the one that I've already drawn out, that gives you a quarter inch um, end on these stirrups. So now that I have that, I'm just gonna go from this corner to this corner and I'm gonna taper that line. And here's where you really just kind of take your time. I'll do it a little bit quicker. There. Oops, let me see. Yeah, sometimes my brain doesn't agree. There. What am I doing here, George? Part of the problem is, is I, I do this so often that I sometimes don't even think about it until I have to demonstrate it. All right, so that is your stirrup piece, and now we're just gonna cut it out. And that is your stirrup leather pattern. All right, that'll be the mo most complicated thing in this whole build, especially the way I show it. All right, the saddle fender parts from your pattern. Transfer it or trace it onto, in this particular case, this is a, a five six four five six. Um, you can use a fairly firm leather for these. And um, again, it just makes a stouter piece. But anyway, this is the half by half. And um, what I do is I use these, you can get these from Amazon, fairly inexpensive, and they're all kinds of different shapes. Um, I think less than 20 bucks, but this is a perfect half inch by half inch square. And that's what I use for my uh, stirrup pad. All right, once I do that, of course, we will cut out those pieces. And now we have our uh, fender and our stirrup. Now do all of the stuff, and of course our little pad. Now do all the stuff that you would do, uh, for example, you would edge this um, top and bottom. You um, can do some decorative work. You can put some basket weave, burnish everything um, on that. And in this case, um, I've got the holes prepped for the fold back where the stirrup will be attached, but I'll show you that in just a minute. Anyway, do all your preparatory work, decorate it however you want. And um, once you get that, there's that piece there. Now the stirrup leather, um, I just glued that half inch pad directly onto the inside of the stirrup. And then I folded these ends in when they were a little moist just to give myself that little stirrup shape, as you hopefully can see there. But anyway, so these are a quarter inch here at the ends. Um, this is a little bit thick, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take our uh, piece of glass, and now we're not gonna feather edge these, we're just gonna take a little bit of the meat off. So just thin it out a little bit and you'll see why at the end, okay? Once I do that, then that is all set to go. We have our fender here too. I went ahead and thin that out as well. And let's go ahead and do some construction steps now. So what I need to do is I need to take this fender and I'm going to turn it back on itself and I'm going to get a rivet 
And so you don't have to put anything in there yet. This is really an easy, easy, fun build. And we're going to set that rivet. Okay, that leaves you a big enough hole there for the post. Okay, and you can always stretch that out a little bit with an awl. That's all there is to that. And um, of course you can dye this and, um, and get it all stained and do whatever that you like to make that look nice. Um, I have this, um, this tool here for the eyelet. You can put your eyelet here at the top. And if you don't have any eyelets, you don't need it. Just a leather hole there works fine. Get it fairly close to the top. Punch that out. Put your eyelet in there and um, whatever eyelet tool that you have. Okay, so that is all set to go. You can go ahead and put your split ring key in there. And now all we have to do is work on the stirrup itself. All right, so the first thing I do is I get a little idea of how that's gonna look size-wise. And um, if your stirrup looks too big for that fender, you could take a little bit off of the top, um, which I think I, I will here. Just a sixteenth of an inch. And all of this is eyeball guesswork. Okay, I'm gonna take my hole punch and I'm gonna go to where there's still a little bit of meat all the way around there. And the nice thing about working with these small projects is it makes working with a big project a lot easier. You sort of develop some fine motor skills with this and then it's nothing more. And let me see here. See if I can take an awl and stretch that out just a little bit. And we're gonna take our stirrup Place it in there. And now before you actually, and it's a hand screw, it doesn't have a slot or anything. Um, so actually before you screw that in there, just make sure you fill that with uh, Loctite um, red or glue. And then you just turn these until they bite. And there is your Western Saddle Fender key fob. All right, I hope you enjoyed this short little video. I almost forgot, I wanted to show you also this old style of uh, Fender. Um, if you wanna make it, this is actually easier. So I just go into my resource uh, library and sort of copy the size down. This is uh, what I came up with. This is a, a, a right fender. And um, so anyway, this is a very simple one to make. And uh, the separation um, uh, for the strap is 5 sixteenths of an inch. And I use a three, um, a six inch piece of edge tan. It's about a three, four ounce leather. And I'm gonna show you how I actually put this Together, I'm not gonna show you the stirrup leather because we've already talked about that. But let's go ahead and glue this on, somewhat centered onto the strap, and I'll show you what we do from there. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 5 16th inch strap, 
um, about six inches in length. It's always better to cut than it is to have to add on. And on the face, I'm going to apply my contact cement and right there in the middle as well. Be neater than I am. And uh, once that tacks up, we'll go ahead and place it there. Our glue is tacked up and we're just going to flush these edges here. Okay, once we have that, and of course you can use different colored leathers, you can dye this, uh, you know, decorate it however you want. And now I'm just going to get a general idea. Okay, the stirrup goes there. We're just gonna get a general idea. Where that needs to go. And we'll draw ourselves a little line there. And now we're going to, you don't need this in there, just glue that up there as well. We're just going to fold that over and make sure it's flush up against that edge. And you have a little bit of room there for that key post to go in there. Now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. We're just going to sort of leave a little bit of a gap for that post that's eventually going to go there. Okay. And I'm just going to butt those two up. You can lap sky them if you want, but uh, for these little novelty projects, you don't need to. So we'll trim off a little bit of that. Maybe a little bit more. And then I will fold that over. Butt that up with it on the back. All of this can be eventually sanded flush and I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, then we're getting close. A little bit more work on this one, but these old style fenders are fun too. Let me glue that up. All right, let's go ahead and butt these edges up. Flush with the edge, you have enough room there for that. Okay, now this part right here, you'll just go sand, and I will do that off camera. I'm gonna use my flap wheel sanders, and then we're going to establish our um, stitch line, and then we're pretty close. So we went ahead and sanded that real quick. Uh, I've butted these two up and I've drawn a center line. I'm going to take my four mil um, stitch and iron and I'm going to punch through. Okay, now I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna punch through these again all the way through and I'm gonna sew it. And uh, then we'll go ahead and, and put it together. All right, so we glued it all up. We sewed it right down the center, put a couple of crease lines on there, uh, went ahead and stretched out the top a little bit for the split ring that we're gonna put in right now. Of course, you don't have to do that because that is a, a high wear area. You can pop a hole in there and just adjust your stitches accordingly, but this is the way I do it. And of course, I'm not gonna show you the um, stirrup because we showed you that on the first one. I'm gonna put that in there. Now that has to be trimmed a little bit closer to the top. Got our corner. 
corners. Here, let's put that in on the other side because I can reach reach that uh, screw post a little bit better over here. And you can see how, don't forget to put Loctite Red in there. And of course, uh, all of the other little things that you want to do to this to make it look nice. Dye it, burnish the edges, finger tight that and with the Loctite in there, that'll be it. And that is your old style. And this is your modern style of fender. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, make yourself some, sell them, give them away. They're wonderful gifts. Thanks for stopping by.